<laughs> Look what I got. Homelite XL12. Beast of the I mean, Tired to tell we've gone from this to the uh, typical run the mill Chinese saw. I mean, this is my go to saw. This just cuts all my firewood, but, but this. <laughs> this is a beast. 20 inch power. 55 cc, I think. I think it's 55. I'm not sure. 50 I, I don't know. The seller I bought off did a complete renovation to the inside. Like, I mean, talking everything new piston, new muffler, new throttle, new carp, everything. The only thing you didn't do, which I kind of had to agree with him, is I didn't redo the paint job because it kind of shows it's it, it's been around. I mean, see the model here. This was the home light <laughs> Terry. Okay, from Quebec. So it's Canadian. What about you? Like so the handlebar that yeah, it's repainted. Oh well. Look at the dogs. They're nice. You know, I think it's the traditional forty to one. I think. I think with these old saws, you kind of got to run them a bit more richer. So I'd say I'd probably put. I don't know. Twenty-five to one bar oil. Just. Nice, man. I mean, no chain break on these things. And that chain is just so freely moved, so you better make damn sure that when you're set this guy down while it's running, if the throttle engages due to, you know, temperature or whatever like that, get the hell away from this, because there's no, there's no chain break. Oh, the filter. I love this filter. Ew! Believe it or not, this is clean. So there's the carp there. He did say that this piece right here. And we got a little Pokemon thingy here. This guy right here is called your reed valve. And that's just been a patch job. He says that is there is a bit of a score crack. So it will give way, but the patch job will hold over for a while. So we're gonna get an order on them online. But like I said, it runs, it starts, it cuts, it's been cutting just fine. It had it out for a while. Cleaned it up. A carburetor. What is this? Tiddleson carburetor? Yeah. You've got your throttle. Your throttle lock. Your choke on. I love this. It's an automatic oiler. So it naturally feeds oil onto the bar. But in the off chance, you just kind of need a bit more oil. There's a manual oiler. I don't know if you can see that on camera. No, you probably can't see that. But take my word for it. You depress this plunger and it just blurps a load of oil onto the bar. I mean like iconic. <laughs> iconic. And, the, I, and this right here is I mean, this saw itself. I mean like yeah, I, I'm not American. I never knew the saw from day one. I, mean, I, I only knew chainsaws only recently but for my American Canadian Fans, I mean, this is what this, this saw was like the saw of the people back in the day. <laughs> a workhorse it weighs a fucking ton. I think that's where the 12 comes from. I heard that the 12 is actually 12 pounds. That's probably true. Uh, this saw, you know, from many movies, um, one of which my favorite was even the one the scene where Ash tries to hack up his missus in the workshop but just couldn't do it. It, and it kind of inspired me to watch that movie just for this saw alone and I'm fortunate enough to have one and this saw kind of inspired me to watch the sequel which then inspired me to make my own <laughs> Evil Dead 2 Chainsaw now, this is already on my channel uh, this is like a rough kind of overview because I've had to be quiet because my kid was sleeping but I'm out in my, my man shed and I can be as loud as I want <laughs> within reason of course I'm not going to fire this up but yeah, this was a Homelight XL2 that I purchased off what we have here in Ireland as done deal. Uh, Craigslist for you Americans. And completely stripped the whole saw and just went as I w went as I went really, as the crow flies. References on pictures. Now I know that on the Ash vs Evil Dead there's a distinctive uh, hump with the red. But I, I just did, I just didn't have the fabrication skills to make something that niche. But I, I kind of like the, the silver metal plate. I mean, 
if you look closely at the very first scene where Ash makes the, the handheld saw in you know the workshed scene in Evil Dead 2, look closely, there is only just a flat metal bar. So yeah, original as I can. One of my favorite things about this, which I, it took me forever to figure it out, but I finally got it, was I wanted the pull cord to actually be a pull cord. And I thought of everything. I was even almost contemplating to get the recoil off a tape measure. But then, lo and behold, my wife gave me the idea of, you know those security keychain thing in my lobbies? You know, why just hock, yeah, it's not gonna show up. Why don't you just hock glue one of them on the inside, which I did, and let that be the pull cord. And suffice to say, that was an ingenious solution. Kept the fuel caps. Tried to get the fin as best I could. Believe it or not, these were all just cable ties. I just kept all the cable ties and just stuck them on. Got some couplers here. These were bloody hard to find. And everything else is just kind of, you know, a half arse. I had to half arse a lot of things, unfortunately, to keep on my best. There's some obvious studs there. The handle hacked off. So yeah, this is just a quick little video of my overall love for Evil Dead. So much so that I am now an official proud owner of a functional Evil Dead 1 chainsaw and a prop Evil Dead 2 chainsaw. And yes, I know it's meant to be held in your right hand, but I'm recording my right hand. And there's only one word that sums this all up. You know what it is, say it with me now. Groovy. <laughs> See you next time.